Hey, what's going on, y'all? So a couple of days ago, I posted a video of me trying out Move.ai for the very first time whenever I got it. And I guess in this video, what I'm going to do is kind of just introduce to you what this system's all about, because I got a lot of questions regarding the systems. There's some confusion in there, so kind of I'm going to make this video just kind of introduce you. And then in the next couple of days or weeks, I'm going to be making some more content about it. Pretty much showing you guys how it works in the field and the results you get. All right, so what is Move.ai? It's pretty much a cloud processing system where you can upload videos to record and it's pretty much going to solve and spit out an animation for you to use in Unreal Engine or Maya or Omniverse or anywhere you want. That's basically what it is. It's a system, you log in, you put your credentials in and you upload video. That is pretty much as simple as I can explain it to you. All right, so what I'm going to do now is actually show you this video and it, you're going to see how this works. So if I press play right here and I'm going to play the, I'm not going to play the entire thing, just kind of like right now. So basically, you can use four cameras, six cameras or eight cameras. And I think this one right here has eight. Obviously, more cameras you have, the better solve you're going to get. Now, in my test, I used four cameras. OK, so just kind of keep that in mind. Again, what this is going to do is they have a layout, which I'm going to show later. Depending on the camera count you have, you have a certain layout that you have to follow. So in this one, uh, it's usually a stagger system. So this right here is a little bit higher lower higher lower around the talent right it's pretty cool now with that being said you kind of understand what the cameras are doing they're capturing talent in all angles and in turn the software is going to calculate that using artificial intelligence and it's gonna pretty much create an animation out of that all right so as you can see here he's like dancing dancing and here's the conversion right here there's not a lot of technologies out there that really surprises me and shocks me but this is this is pretty much one of them right now, because usually in the traditional mocap world, you have cameras like a Vicon or Optitrack, but you also have to wear a suit that has dots in it. If you've seen any behind the scenes in any CG animation, you know what I'm talking about. But this way, there's no markers on the body. It's markerless. Now, the markings on the floor, that is pretty much just how far he can go without kind of like getting cut off on the camera's view. So this has nothing to do with the actual capture itself. It's just to help the actor or the talent, especially when you're alone, you want to know how far you can go before your head gets cut off or your feet gets cut off. So, and then what that's going to do is create an animation. All right, from the video, so you upload. Okay, so now you know how it kind of works. I'm going to go to your documentations. And by the way, this right here, if you're going to release something that's fairly new, this is how you do it. This is crazy. I followed this step by step and I was able to do it and I've never used this system before. This is a very well done documentation. All right. So let's start from the welcome page and let's go to the platform core features. If you want to know about that minimum four, maximum number of cameras, 16. That is a lot of cameras. But again, if you want high fidelity, I would say go for that. And I think that video he had eight. Minimum video, 1080, maximum 4K. Again, for the maximum video frame rate, you want at least 120 frames per second. And I'll talk about this a little bit more. And it uses cloud-based AWS platform, all this stuff. Concurrent processing, 200 takes simultaneously. It has finger tracking, but right now I think they're at 70% finger tracking. Again, it will track your fingers. So it's not there yet, but this is still in beta. It can still improve from that. And it has a dynamic foot solver. And if you scroll down here, you'll see kind of like the suggested here. And again, the crazy thing about this is for minimum cameras, you can capture one person. But I'm going to try and capture two people with four cameras. All right. I want to see how that works. Now, for two to three people, you're looking at six cameras and eight. You can get up to five people for eight cameras. You can capture five people and all of them don't have to wear nothing all right minimum gopro is eight or nine or ten you can use sony which is expensive ursa g1 if you have 16 laying around why not you know canon r5 you know but for me i you i am using the hero 10 all right so for the gopro settings i'm not really gonna go over this step by step because it depends on what you're gonna be using but like i said i follow this to the teeth and i had no issues whatsoever 
All right, so here's the mocap equipment list. Uh, has some stuff for the black magic. I'm not using any of that. I'm just using a camera, a tripod, and that's it. Clothing advice, if you've done green screen or any tracking, you obviously want something that will contrast your background. So, you know, get red, blue, and stuff like that. Uh, you don't want to blend in in your environment. You want to stand out. Additionally, for the sleeves, make sure that they can see your hands. The cameras can see your hands. And if your character has heels, make sure wear the same exact heel. Only makes sense. So let's talk about the shoot, all right? We already have the clothing advice and even lighting. Now for me, I'm gonna do this outside so I can get a better lighting. I mean, I did it here in the house, but I have to turn some lights on so I can get some nice lights in there, all right? I see tripod and right here is the staggering camera layout like I talked about, all right? Here's the four, uh, four cameras is right here. So I had my cameras like that staggered. So one of the cons right now that I can think of is you will kind of need space for this. But the good thing is you can do this outside or in a garage. You don't need a computer at all for this, all right? So minimum is three meters, but four meters is ideal. Now I'm a shorter fella, so I can get away with three meters and I'm still gonna be in the entire frame. I'm gonna go to six camera right here. I might try six cameras as well. I'm gonna go four and then six. I don't know if I'm gonna go eight. Honestly, I don't have enough cash for that. Um, and then again, alternating camera heights, so you can see right here. And then if you have a non-standard camera layout, you can contact them. Now here's the calibration. Calibration is kind of cool, and I'll let you watch it here. Sec. All right, so I'm not gonna show the entire thing, but basically you walk towards the camera and that's why there's a marker right here. And then you back up and you do it for every single camera. And that's why I said that's those markers are there for that. You know, it's not really tracking anything. Um, that's just for him to know where to stop, okay? And this clapping right here is very important because what this is right here is actually acting as a sync clap for all of the cameras, which is clever. Because by clapping three times, you know, I clap a lot in my shorts because it helps me sync. Clap three times so we're all sync with all eight cameras. In the software, you're going to put in when was the first clap and when was the last clap so it can sync all of it, which is really sweet. And after that, you just stand in the Y pose and then you move towards the camera on all of them and then you go back to the center. All right, so here we go. It's good. And after that, after you're done, you just stop recording and that's your calibration take. Now for recording a take, you just stand in the center of the capture area, press record, clap three times above your head, and then do a T-pose for a second, and then perform. That's it. And then when you're done, stop recording. Pretty cool, right? Now to add more people to the scene, clap three times, and then make sure y'all both go to T-pose at the same time and then perform. Right now, again, one of the con, even though they have this renaming tool, you have to create folders in your computer, you know, for different cameras. If you have eight, you need eight folders. Uh, but it's pretty easy. I had four and I, I didn't have any problems with um, the file managing, so it's not too bad. And then after that, you're just gonna drag and drop, or you actually see it right here, they have eight folders. Drag and drop this into the actual cloud AI software. And this is gonna upload and pretty much do its thing. And then creating a project session is so easy. And then creating a calibration, all that is, is you're uploading the calibration video that you did. And I'll show you that real quick. And again, you can rewatch these later. So here you go, renaming it right here. First time clap, and then last time clap. And then when the calibration starts and ends, you can put that in here and then choose the videos. You know, you go into camera one, it's this one. And then you click on that until you're done with all eight. So the calibration process is pretty nice. Now this is gonna take at least an hour for me, um, depending on your internet speed. As far as, uh, you know, like how fast it is at uploading. So you definitely need some good upload speed with this because these are videos being uploaded. And especially if you have 4K videos, that's even more so as those are bigger files. And then creating and running a take is once you're done, you can actually upload the takes, right? That you can do. And it's the same thing. You're just renaming it and then you're just selecting the takes and then just uploading it. That's it. And again, I'm going to go over this. I'm just kind of giving you an overview. The rig mapping right now, they have, I believe, Blender, MetaHuman, and Unreal Engine. Um, that's the three rigs they have. I did ask them if they are going to have uh, Relusion iClone in, in one of the skeleton rigs. 
Uh, that would be super cool if they did. Uh, but we'll see what they say. All right, and I guess, yeah, Ma Maya H-I-K as well. Sorry, I forgot about that. I always forget about Maya. Pretty much once you're done, this right here is the processing. It's going to show you that your video is processing or done. And after it's finished, you can, res uh, you can actually preview the results. If I press play right here, and this is raw capture from the uh, AI. And this is the download FBX Motion Blender. Yeah, you can preview it and it's it's pretty crazy and they do have the meta human now they don't have it in here but it's there okay it's i can i was able to export out of here to a meta human just fine okay so right now the cheapest way to do it is to buy hero 8 now hero 8 is the minimum because they have wireless connectivity um they did send me an app that i purchased for like five dollars that lets me control all the cameras all at once as far as uh, recording and stop recording so it helps a lot so I'm able to control all four cameras with this app. Uh, Hero 8, Hero 9, Hero 10. Now, the only reason why you would want a Hero 10 is it has 4K 120 frames per second in it. All right. So that's pretty good quality 4K 120 FPS. So that's why Hero 10 is up there. And again, Hero 8 can do it. So right now I looked it up. You can get eight Hero 8s for the price of four Hero 10s, depending on where you look. Eight Hero 8s can capture five people mocap that's bananas uh, you're looking at twenty four hundred dollars that can capture five people all right now obviously this is gonna have limitations and i'm gonna try and see if i can find those limitations uh right now so far the only thing is there is a problem with the stomach in one of, in the skeletons which they are already taking care of and lastly pricing right now, beforehand, someone told me that they were quoted quite a bit for like 60 minutes of mocap, but they did tell me that was like prior to the mega grant because these guys just did receive a mega grant from Epic. I'm really hoping that this would become cheaper or available or affordable for us because obviously there is a gap between us, like me, YouTuber, and the indies. Indies, they can pay for this because they still have budget. But if we're talking like people who want to start getting into VTubing or making short films, $2,400 for hardware, that's really awesome. But you still got to pay for the software and the cloud processing. And unfortunately, they do not have a price for this yet. And I'm hoping, you know, in a couple of months or this year, they would. That would be really cool. Um, I did give them some suggestions. Honestly, I don't know if they're going to take what I said, but I hope they would consider it. Because this right here, like I said, is pretty insane and again if i go to remove ai by the way before i go if you go here they actually compared this to an opti track and rumor has it that they actually compared this with a vicon system as well so if you look at this opti track right here and this is really what ultimately said this is when i said okay it's time it's time to try move ai because i've seen videos about this before but look at this thing all right so you have the opti track and then move ai the opti track is pink i mean opti tracks price compared to this right the move ai is freaking crazy all right and i'm not sure if they're gonna release the vicon one um but i did see it somewhere that they did compare it or somebody compared it that is crazy i mean obviously it's running slow-mo because it's 120 i think this is 16 OptiTrack cameras compared to 8 GoPros plus the processing. Crazy thing about this is, this is why I'm excited about it. What if they're able to do this like live stream? You know, now you have VTubers like Code Miko. Now you're going to have VTubers out there who don't have to wear nothing at all whenever they're VTubing. They can walk around in a space and just chill and wear whatever they want while VTubing. And uh, I did ask if it can kind of read mocap helmets and they said at some mocap helmets they they were able to read so if you have a helmet on your head um it should work but i'm gonna test that out obviously i have the diy skateboard helmet and i have the face good so i'll test that out just for the sake of testing it out but yeah sorry this video just got really long let me know if you have any questions below and let me know if this kind of interests you because to be honest it's pretty interesting in my opinion and uh yeah i'll see y'all later